Okay, let's look at question eight, the electricity question from the June 2019 uh, Blimpopo exam. It says, in the circuit diagram below, the reading on the voltmeter V1 is 12 volts and the reading on ammeter A1 is 2 amps. It's marked on the diagram. Distinguish between EMF and terminal potential difference. Now, normally they actually ask you what's potential difference. So you have to be very careful because potential difference is the energy transferred per unit electrical charge. But that's not the definition they're looking for. They want this one, terminal potential difference. It's the voltage measured across the terminals of a battery when charges are flowing in the circuit. So this is different from EMF because EMF is the work done per unit charge by the battery. That's what the definition says. So I would have accepted that. It's not what the memo says, okay? So the memo says, I mean, the, the exam guidelines say EMF is the work done per unit charge by the source. But the memo said it's the potential difference measured across the terminals of the battery when no charges are flowing in the circuit. So what they wanted you to actually distinguish here is the one is a measure of voltage when the circuit is closed and the one is a measure of voltage when the circuit is open. But the way they phrased it and with the four marks it's a little bit iffy, but you have to realize they want the difference between terminal potential difference and EMF because the one is when charge is um, flowing and the one is char when charge is not. When you get to grade 12, you discuss this a bit more because batteries have an internal resistance and these two values are different. In grade 10, we treat these two values as the same. So this is technically, if you were to study your definition, EMF is technically the work done per unit charge by the source. That is the proper definition, but that's not the one that they asked for in the memo for this. But if you handed it in to me, I would mark this one right. But I think this question was really trying to make you distinguish between an open circuit and a closed circuit, and it's the voltage in an open circuit versus a, a closed circuit. Then it says define the term resistance. In the exam guidelines, it tells you resistance is the ratio of potential difference across a resistor to the current in the resistor. So this is basically Ohm's law here, which you learn about in grade 11. But the memo was happy with resistance is the opposition to the flow of electric charges, which is what is in the exam guidelines as a description of resistance as opposed to a definition. So this question was not well stated in the exam. Now it says to you, calculate the total resistance of the circuit for five marks. So for five marks, what they want you to do here is they want you to know, look at this circuit here. If you look when a battery comes out, when an electron comes out the battery here, it comes out through here, it must go through the four ohm resistor, and then it comes around here, and then here the electrons have a choice, they can go through either branch of the circuit here, and eventually they come back and return to the battery. So what we have here is a series resistor and two parallel resistors. So to calculate the total resistance, the total resistance is going to be equal to the series resistance plus the parallel resistance, okay? So you need to find the series resistance and the parallel resistance. The series resistance is easy, it's just four ohms. Now you need to calculate the parallel resistance. And so the parallel resistance, you can go and use these formulas. Remember they give you on the formula sheet. So the series resistance, you just add all the resistors together. The parallel resistance, one over the parallel resistance is equal to one over the R1 plus one over R2. Or you can use that formula that I call the quick and dirty formula where you multiply the resistors. Six times three is 18. And then you divide by the sum of the resistors. Six plus three is nine. So you get 18 divided by nine gives you two ohms. Okay. So this is going to be four plus two, which is going to be six ohms. Okay. So the answer will be six ohms. No unit, no mark. Sorry, I need to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. The total resistance is 6 ohms, but to get all 5 marks, you need to have written out this formula for the series, written out this formula 
for the parallel you need to have substituted they will give you a mark for that um, short formula for the parallel resistance but it's not given in the data sheet so if you don't remember it you have to use this one but just make sure when you use this one you remember to invert your final answer because it's 1 over r parallel equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 but either way your answer should come out to 6 ohms now it says to you what is the reading on voltmeter 2 so in grade 10 you're not supposed to use v equals ir you are supposed to know that series resistors okay are potential dividers so the 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 voltage or the potential remember the voltage and the potential difference are the same they are going to split up in the ratio of the resistors so what we do is we look at these two resistors in the parallel part and these two have an effective resistance of 2 ohms so if we look at this and we turn these into one resistor in the circuit we've got 4 ohms and 2 ohms okay and there is a total voltage of 12 volts so the total voltage is going to be split up in the series circuit in the ratio of the uh, resistors so the resistor ratio the resistor ratio is 4 that's not a 4 is 4 is to 2 okay and the total voltage is 12 volts so it's going to be split up in the ratio of 4 is to 2 or if you simplify this okay 2 is to 1 so then we say what's my total of my ratio and let's use the original ratio 4 plus 2 is 6 and we want to know V2 is for the 4 ohm resistor so it's 4 divided by 6 times 12 so it's the ratio 4 divided by 6 what's happening there 4 divided by where did my writing go 4 divided by 6 multiplied by the total voltage in the circuit and then you're going to if you do the sum you end up with 8 volts so 8 volts of current is going to flow through 8 volts of current 8 volts of potential is going to flow across the 4 ohm resistor so you but you can also if you want to uh, work out the difference between these two and put it into V equals IR but for now you're supposed to know that a series circuit is a potential divider then it says to you what will the reading on ammeter 2 be now remember here that when current goes through a parallel circuit the current is going to split up but it splits up in an inverse ratio remember it's an inverse ratio of the resistors I always say to you current is like children if you give them a hard question and an easy question most of the kids will do the easy question and a few will do the hard question so here's the hard question less of the current does the hard question more of the current does the easy question it's an inverse relationship so I have two amps here okay so the parallel resistors will split the current in an inverse ratio to their resistance okay so if you have a look here I've got a 6 ohm and a 3 ohm resistor so the ratio of the resistors is 6 is to 3 okay so the ratio of the current is the inverse of this will be 3 is to 6 so that 3 is to 6 is a total of 9 and going through the 6 ohm resistor is 3 ninths okay 3 divided by that's not a divide 3 divided by 9 times 2 because there's a total of 2 amps going through there so that you end up with 2 thirds because it's 3 divided by 9 is a third times 2 is 2 thirds you end up with 2 thirds or 0 0.67 amps because it's 0 0.6666 recurring 
So the smaller current, less current goes through the bigger resistor. Now it says to the amount of charge, remember charge is Q, so we need to use this other formula, Q equals I delta T. So I'm not going to write the delta here, I'm just going to go Q equals I T, because it's hard to type in the delta. So we use this formula, we want to know the charge Q. We know the current in ammeter 1 is 2 amps, it's given in the question. We need to multiply by the time, the time is in seconds. So if the time is in seconds, we can substitute it straight away. So we get Q equals 240 coulombs because we had the SI units in the question. Now it says to you, how will the reading on ammeter A1 be affected if the 6 ohm resistor is removed from the circuit? If you look at this whole circuit and you take out the 6 ohm resistor, and they want to know what will happen to the current, because this is ammeter A1, in the whole circuit. So if we take this 6 ohm resistor out, whenever you take a resistor out of a parallel circuit, the resistance will increase. It seems very weird, but that's how it works. If you take the resistor out, the resistance will increase. So if the resistance increases, the current has to decrease. So what will happen to the current? It will decrease because there's an inverse relationship here. Explain this answer without doing any calculations. So exactly what I've just explained, you're going to write, if the resistor is removed, the total resistance of the circuit will increase. However, the voltage cannot change. Remember you've got one battery there or whatever your battery is. So the voltage cannot change. So what is going to happen? So now with increased resistance, current will decrease because current has an inversely proportional relationship. inversely proportional relation, I've spelt it wrong, relationship to resistance and that should get you your three marks for that.